One day there came a time for me to decide what I wanted to be. I knew the answer right away in no uncertain terms. I heard me say, I want to be a buggy whip maker like my father before me. My daddy done fine in the buggy whip line, and a buggy whip maker's what I want to be. Then about the time I'd learned enough to go far, along came Mr. Ford and his funny old car. In about the time it took him to park it, the bottom dropped out of the buggy whip market. Now I'm caught in a sad situation. Seems I've prepared for the wrong occupation. Wanted to be a buggy whip maker like my father before me. But now no one does fine in the buggy whip line. And out of work is what I'm going to be. Out of work is what I'm going. Gee, that's kind of a sad story. Now, after a while, you'll see our young friend could have solved his problem by training to be a Ford mechanic. Actually, he could have avoided that problem altogether if he'd just known about the changing world of work. You see, the jobs people do and the way they do those jobs are constantly in a state of change. New opportunities appear. Old ones disappear. The farther we get into the 20th century, the faster things seem to change. And the more you know about those changes that are happening, the better, the happier career choice you'll be able to make. So, we'll talk to some people who know firsthand about the changing world of work. You know, each day, <clears throat> I cannot help but be dramatically impressed with the ever-changing market that faces you. There's a requirement for new skills as a result of the many new products that have hit the market. The opportunity out there is absolutely inconceivable. One trend in the workaday world influenced by all those kinds of changes is the growing presence of women, both in total numbers and in jobs traditionally held by men. And I have such a person here with me today. Her name is Natalie Harrison. And Natalie holds the title of Coordinating Architect for the Contractor. And Natalie, we're gonna talk to you more about what that exactly means later. But please right now, tell me, where are we? We're in the personnel elevator going up on this very large construction site, which is going to be the largest reinforced concrete building in the world. It will eventually be 74 floors high. Natalie, exactly where are we? What floor are we on? I can't tell. There are no numbers or anything up here. We're on the fifth floor, and this part of the floor has not been poured yet. The iron workers will be setting up the reinforcing steel. What about women? How difficult is it for a woman to get into your field? I think it's not quite as difficult as it was when I was starting out. People are more used to women in a wide variety of jobs. Instead of just being a housewife? Or instead of being an office worker or a teacher or the other traditional female roles. Was it difficult when you started? It was extremely difficult. I still think the first job is the most difficult one to get. Uh, having it, a woman can show what she can do. I think she has to have enough strength to be persistent and to continue to learn and to continue to demonstrate because every new person she meets will be surprised to find her in this role. Changes in the laws and in people's attitudes have had a big effect among women. 
changes in technology have meant big effects for everyone. Around the turn of the century, for example, most people's jobs had to do with manufacturing, making things. Today, as a result of advancing technology, fewer than one worker in three is employed making things. Another example, in 1945, each U.S. farmer fed 15 Americans. Now, with a new farm technology, he feeds more than 50. And one more example, in New York City alone, more than 40,000 elevator operators jobs were eliminated by the automatic elevator. Of course, technology doesn't only eliminate jobs, it creates them. Take automatic elevators, for example. Someone has to design them, draw the plans, build them, install them, oversee their operation, and repair them if they break. Those are all the new jobs created by the new technology. But notice that the eliminated jobs are the unskilled ones. The new ones take a lot of training. The changing world of work has really made waves all down the line. Now we're finding that some of the jobs require very special training. As you've heard, for some people, that could mean college. But there is one authority who estimates that fewer than 20% of today's jobs really require that college education. So lately, a greater emphasis has been placed on what we call paycheck education. That's what we'd like to talk about right now. Excuse me, sir. May I ask you a few questions? Certainly. What are you doing here, first of all? Well, I'm an instructor in the plant department, which teaches the uh, people out in the field, which are the workers that go to your home to fix the phone, or in the central office that provides the dial tone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess, really, uh, we're here to serve them. When they need, uh, they have some people that need training, they send them to us. How much does the student have to pay for this? He pays nothing. Once he's hired by the telephone company, and a lot of companies have gone into the same program, all the training is provided free of charge. Mm -hmm. Looking around, it seems like maybe a handicapped person could very easily do some of the work here. Oh, yes. Uh, not in this particular branch, but the telephone company has telephone operators. Uh, Western Electric, which manufactures all of our equipment, has a lot of sit-down jobs where they have hired a lot of handicapped. Mm -hmm. Naturally, they can't be climbing a telephone pole or driving a truck, Crucial. but they could be working in the central office as a tester, uh, which is a sit-down job. As a matter of fact, we even start training people that are disadvantaged, so-called, and teach them how to read and write if they have to. So they really do not need college for this course? Oh, no, by no saying? means. No. As they go along, the more education, of course, the further they can go in the telephone company. As these people age in the telephone company or whatever business, as they go to the next higher job, they have to have more technical training, and that's when they come in to me. Paycheck education, that's what we're talking about. Paycheck or career education. It's a very new, but it's an important alternative to be added to that list of yours, the list of first steps toward a career that could also include college, it could also include apprenticeships and training programs, as you've seen here. And as you've heard, it's also one of several areas in the world of education where those new jobs that you're looking for are happening, along with the education for the disadvantaged and for the handicapped persons we spoke of, for the gifted, also for the very young. These new um, job opportunities in education are part of a whole new growing trend. For instance, here, I've noted, in, under government service alone, it's growing fantastically. There's a need for forest rangers, uh, control officers in pollution, work of a nature and ecology and conservation. Particularly, there's a heavy accent on in the health service field. There's a need as a result of this for specialists and technicians, an ever-growing need in many other related fields. But there's another change that has occurred, and you've all been a part of it, noticed it. There is an increasing amount of leisure time. When people aren't at work, they're likely to be out enjoying themselves, and the things they do to enjoy themselves create opportunities for other people. Indoor tennis, we have discovered, is creating new jobs for people. Today, we decided to investigate a little. 
We're out at the Tui Tennis Club in Skokie, Illinois. Hi, Dave. How are you? Fine. How are you, Yvonne? Fine, thanks. Good to see you. Good I understand the indoor tennis business is really growing. Oh, it's going very well. How is it growing? Well, with, uh, I know that uh, within the Chicagoland area, for instance, 10 years ago, there were about, uh, there were one or two indoor tennis clubs, and now there are about 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, to give you an idea, the, the number of people that are involved in something like this, probably the average club has about 25 employees. So that probably in the Chicagoland area alone, there are over a thousand people involved in the indoor tennis business alone. Our club has almost 3,000 members. So the clerical staff is tremendous. We have uh, maintenance people. We have people who work behind the desk taking the constant reservations that are called in. And uh, we have people who, um, for instance, our pro staff now. We have seven pros who are kept uh, busy almost a full week. And this is because uh, the tennis business has gotten so popular that we're open now 16 hours a day and seven days a week. And this is very typical of, of uh, the Chicagoland area and pretty much of the country. Just what effect does this have on support industries? Um, an example would be all of, all of the clothing that you see here, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. the high fashion clothing that, uh, that people are buying. Uh, tennis shoes, tennis rackets, uh, tremendous demand for tennis balls. Uh, many companies are expanding their facilities. And then it goes on to, uh, I think, industries that you never even think of. For in instance? connection. Well, for instance, out on the tennis court, you have um, what used to be just an asphalt surface mm -hmm. tennis court. And now they're making those surfaces out of um, a great many synthetics, including carpets and things like this. And these, these uh, companies now have sprung up a dozen or two of those. I see. Uh, there's a special type of lighting that's required, for instance, on a, on a tennis court. And there have been a number of new companies now that have gotten involved in this. Um, and then to support things like the Whirlpool and saunas, there's all sorts of people who, who build and maintain these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, those kind of industries have cropped up. Well, thanks so much, Dave. It's been very interesting, very informative, and I think I'd like to play indoor tennis. Great. So Come around and see a lot of it. Thank you, Yvonne. You've got to keep up with what's happening. That's the key thing to remember about the changing world of work. If right now you're ready to choose your career, I'd say you're in a pretty fortunate position because you can actually choose a job in a field where the job opportunities are likely to grow rather than shrink. For anybody in school, there are an innumerable sources of information that will be maximally helpful to you. For instance, there's your school's career counselor. The personnel department in business or industry will be glad to talk to you and give you a lift and an assist in which direction you should be headed. The post office department alone, the civil service jobs, are large in numbers and tremendous in the varieties that they offer. Your public library has so many books that are uncountable on career guidance. And within those books, you will get maximum help as to how to go about seeking where you best fit and belong in the society. And last of all, I heartily recommend you talk to those in industry that are actually working. They, too, will be most helpful to you. So take what you've learned from these many sources and match it up with what you know about yourself, your interests, your goals, your abilities. And chances are pretty good you won't be stuck like that buggy whip maker in the Model T world. I'm going to build my very own highway to the future that lies ahead. If I can't be a buggy whip maker like my dad, I'll be a car mechanic instead. You gotta roll with the times. Keep a practical point of view. You gotta roll with the times. Or they'll roll right over you. You gotta roll. Roll along with the times. Roll, roll.